Now, one of the, one does the things. <laughs> the origin of love. There are not as many uh, pop flourishes. <coughs> suck it, it sucks. <laughs> Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Here I am coming at you at long last, finally, with another Now and Then video. Yes, Now and Then is my album review feature in which I talk about two albums by the same artist. The first being their latest release, and the second one being one from their past catalogue. Today we are shining the Now and Then spotlight on British pop musician Mika, and for now we'll be talking about his brand new album, My Name is Michael Holbrook. This is his fifth album, and his first in four years. Now, I've been a fan of Mika since his very first album back in 2007. Although his flamboyant song stylings were almost too over the top for me, I have to admit. But at the same time, it felt fresh and was bright and positive, whereas most of the music at that time, and come to think of it nowadays as well, is very angry or very angsty or very sexy or had some other aggressive kind of a feel behind it. And his music was pretty much just plain pop fun ear candy. Now, uh, one thing that can be expected from a Mika album, as I j basically just intimated, is fun, to some degree. Uh, maybe more fun on some albums than others, uh, and that's why I always look forward to his releases. Now, the first single uh, on this album, Ice Cream, it worried me at first, uh, because just like its title, it's very much ear candy of the highest order, a fun pop confection, poppy and sugary, something that I've actually cooled off on quite a bit over the last several years. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I really enjoyed that kind of stuff, but now it's just not so much, it's not all that much fun anymore for me, for some reason. I guess I like my music with more substance, but not too much substance, I guess. I kind of strike a happy medium, what can I say? Uh, but the second single from this album, uh, a track called Tiny Love, which actually opens the album, by the way, uh, basically redeemed the album's worth in my eyes, I guess you'd say. Uh, it's a much more understated song about, uh, its lyrics are about how the best kind of love is not always the hit you over the head, butterflies in your stomach kind of love, but can often be the more subtle kind. And in a way that kind of reflects my feelings about the song itself. It's not the overly sweet, sugary, pop, ear candy kind of stuff. It's a much more subtle song. It works its charms much more subtly. And so that's kind of a, a, a good metaphor for the song itself, really. And another great uplifting song that was also a single, actually, is called Tomorrow. And it's basically about how we should live in the now and cherish every moment. Uh, just just a wonderful, feel-good song with an almost timeless pop sound and, and a really universal message, too. So uh, that's a, another good song. Uh, and Platform Ballerinas is another one of the uh, catchy, fun, high-energy songs. It's actually probably the most uniquely contemporary pop-sounding track, aside from Ice Cream. Uh, so yeah, this, it's another uh, ear-catching song on the album. Now, one of the things that really struck me about this album and, and made me fall in love with it, honestly, is that there are a few songs on here that talk about the good and the bad in all of us. Uh, jealousy is the first of those songs. It's a song about the emotion jealousy and how it is it is mostly a negative thing. It mostly affects us in negative ways. Although the lyrics hint just a little bit about how it can occasionally possibly be a good thing, a, a motivator perhaps. And then Blue is another one of those songs that falls in the same vein and it's one of my favorites on the album. It's basically an ode to the color blue and uh, the, the lyrics reference the various meanings of the word uh, but mostly center on its connotation to the emotion of sadness and how Mika, uh, in the words of the song lyrics, will always love the blue in you, which is it's just a pretty sentiment. It's a beautiful song. I love it. And another song that goes along those same lines and is another one of my absolute favorites, another standout on the album, is I Went to Hell Last Night. Uh, the lyrics move from the title and talking about the bad there is in all of us to how there can be just as much good in all of us. Uh, one passage in the lyrics says, there's a little bit of God in everything, which is, again, it's a, a beautiful sentiment. I, I love it. And and this is coming from somebody who's just not particularly religious. I am not religious, and I love the sentiment of that song. Uh, it's, you know, as I said, it's just one of the standouts on the album, honestly. 
And then as far as the slower moments on the album go, uh, there's a song called Ready to Call This Love. It's a gorgeous ballad. It's a duet with an Italian singer named Jack Savaretti. Uh, the only complaint I have about that song is that uh, their voices sound a little too similar. Uh, mainly it's because they sing in the same octave. So, you know, but aside from that, it's a very, very pretty song, very nice song. And then Paloma is another pretty ballad, beautiful, gorgeous ballad that uh, gives the album another one of its better quiet moments. So, but yeah, I've got to say, all in all, this album, it was worth the four years' wait uh, from his last, uh, which Mika's albums almost always are. Uh, I have yet to be really disappointed in any of his albums. Uh, a couple of them have taken longer for me to warm up on. But uh, yeah, all in all, as I said, yeah, this is one of his better albums. Uh, My Name is Michael Holbrook by Mika, his latest album. But that was now, and this is then, The Origin of Love, Mika's third album from 2012. Now, the cover art for this album is the most understated of all of his releases, and it might lead you to think that the music is more subdued as well, but it's not, at least not in terms of the moods of the songs. Uh, it still has its share of upbeat tunes, although the arrangements overall are less elaborate, uh, not as many pop or electronic flourishes as there are on many of his other albums. Uh, the subject matter of the lyrics is also less varied than on his latest album. Uh, it's predominantly made up of love songs, this album is, uh, love songs of various kinds, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a boring album. It's not. Uh, Love You When I'm Drunk is uh, its not one of my favorite songs lyrically, but sonically it's, it's like a cross between Fleetwood Mac and Supertramp, uh, which makes it kind of grab the ear. And uh, Celebrate is a real party anthem. It's probably the most overtly upbeat song on the album, and it actually features a guest appearance by Pharrell Williams. And speaking of guest artists, uh, Popular Song, which is a track on here, features Priscilla Renee and is a bouncy, jaunty, semi-hip-hop kind of a song that it's, it's apparently based on the song Popular from the musical Wicked, which I'm not familiar with, so uh, you, I couldn't tell you where that song ends and Mika's song begins. Uh, although the single version that you may have heard on the radio is d very different. Uh, not only does it feature Ariana Grande instead of Priscilla Renee, but it's also got a totally different arrangement and slightly different lyrics. And that version is actually featured on Ariana Grande's debut album, Yours Truly. Uh, one of my favorite songs on this album is called Step With Me, and it, it has a breezy reggae beat to it. Uh, it's a love song, and some people might find its lyrics to be a little too saccharine, a little too sweet, but I just totally love it. it it's, what can I say, it's a, it's a, it's a not-so-guilty pleasure of mine. And uh, the song Emily is kind of a quasi-EDM song, and again, also with a little bit of hip-hop to it. A uh, very upbeat, and uh, the reason I like it partly is because it also appears in a French version on the deluxe edition of the album. So that probably explains why it it's kind of earwormed earwormed itself into my head uh, a little more than most of the other songs on the album. And uh, the song Heroes is one of those that really made an impact on me. It was written years before Stoneman Douglas, and it may be because of that and more recent events, but that's what the lyrics seem to be referencing, at least to me anyway, is uh, you know school kids today having to live with that, all that kind of stuff, that negative stuff. So yeah, it's a bit of a heart-rending song, although, you know, as I, as I said, that might just be my interpretation of the lyrics based on, you know, the social environment right now. You might get a different interpretation from the lyrics. And that's one of the great song, the great things about songs in general is sometimes the lyrics can be interpreted in multiple ways. But anyway, uh, moving on here. Uh, the song Make You Happy, uh, that one has, it reminds me a bit of uh, Imogene Heap. It has kind of a vocoder effect that he puts on his voice in the lyrics. Uh, it seems to be a song about the protagonist being in a relationship much more for the benefit of his partner at the expense of himself. But then again, it's one of those songs, again, that the lyrics you can maybe interpret it in a few different ways. Uh, and then there's a song called Underwater, which is one of my absolute favorites, one of my favorites on the album, and one of my favorite Mika songs overall. Uh, and it's it's much more of a straightforward love song, but it just it has a beautiful sound to it. Uh, the piano arpeggios in it uh, make it sound like it's underwater, really. Uh, it's just a beautiful sound, song. Um, if you listen to no other song off this album, I would recommend Underwater. It's just a really, really pretty song. Now, it's important to note that I actually have the deluxe version of this album. It includes a nine-track bonus disc on it. Uh, half of the tracks on that album are version, uh, acoustic versions of the album songs, and the album also, or this, this disc also includes a couple of remixes and a French version of Emily, as I called, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. It's called El Midi, which uh, translates to "She Told Me." And there's also a new track on here called "Tada," which I think it's one of my favorites on the album. But then again, it's only on the uh, uh, deluxe version, and I think it's such a good song. I think it should have been included on the standard version of the album. 
but then in, on Spotify or wherever you could probably uh, find the song and stream it. But anyway, yeah, very, very good album, excellent album, uh, The Origin of Love by Mika. Now, which of the albums do I like more? Uh, honestly, I would have to go with My Name is Michael Holbrook, if only for the sonic variation and the variety of subject matter covered in the songs, uh, as opposed to The Origin of Love. But yeah, I, you know, honestly, there's not really a Mika album that I'm disappointed in or that I dislike or hate. But uh, yeah, they're, they're both worth, worth checking out. But yeah, My Name is Michael Holbrook by Mika. Definitely worth checking out. It's, it's going to be one of my favorites of the year, I'm pretty sure. So anyway, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this look at Mika now and then. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.